suddenly things begin to change. And I think we're learning more and more that the motor of evolution isn't competition and biology and ecology, which is what Darwin thought. The motor of evolution is physics, it's climate, most of all, it's the ice. Twenty-four thousand years ago, humans were trying to avoid the same fate as the Welsh rhinos. One of the hunters, Aki, and his woman, Mara, are leaving. The rest of their family is dead, including their own son. The only other member of the clan to survive is the chief, Bran. It was his decision to stay that's cost so many lives. They have no choice but to move on, because just the three of them can't hunt large animals. While the weather is relatively mild, they can live off smaller prey, berries and roots. But when next winter comes, they won't survive if they're still alone. Aki, Mara, and Bran are trying to reach their nearest neighbors, a clan they meet up with from time to time and have even exchanged members with in the past. Their camp is a hundred miles further east, but progress is painfully slow. Although it's March and the worst of the winter is over, snow is on the ground for at least seven months a year. They've walked for a week, only to find a deserted camp. Now they are truly alone. There's no point in turning back. They can only go on into unknown territory with one aim, survival. They're heading south into a large valley, a valley that today is underwater at the bottom of the North Sea. 24,000 years ago, so much of the planet's water was trapped in the ice sheets that sea levels were 350 feet lower than today. The travelers are able to walk from Britain all the way to mainland Europe. Aki, Mara, and Bran understand enough about navigation to head away from the ice and in the general direction of the midday sun. But each day they need food and water. It makes sense to stay with the river, even if it takes them off course. Mara and Aki believe that Bron has forfeited his right to act as their leader. His physical strength now seems irrelevant. Their chances of survival will depend less on brute force and more on intelligence. The human brain has always been the key to the success of our species. 
it evolved in response to two and a half million years of an ice age climate. Not here in Europe, but on the other side of the world, in our ancestral homeland, Africa. Before the Ice Age began, our earliest ancestors were confined to the lush African rainforests. They lived among these trees, more ape than human. Three million years ago, this is what we would have looked like. Uh, this is one of our earliest ancestors, and it's called an Australopithecine. They had a brain size that is about a third of the brain size of uh, modern humans. It was about the same size in relation to their bodies as we see in modern chimpanzees. So uh, they, they weren't stupid, uh, but they d didn't have the cognitive, the brain specialties that we have as modern humans. Once the Ice Age started, the climate of Africa was transformed by the pulsing ice sheets. They never reached this far south, but were absorbing so much of the world's moisture, the entire continent became more arid. The great African forests were disappearing, replaced by open savanna land. At the same time, evolution took a decisive step. By about two million years ago, a new creature was walking the savanna, Homo ergaster, the first of our ancestors we can really call human. Homo ergaster would have been quite tall, long legs, and more importantly, he had a brain size that was twice the size of the Australopithecines. Now, this brain allowed him to live in an entirely different environment. Homo ergaster was at home in the open country of savanna, and he had to use this brain in order to survive. Compared to other creatures, humans have an enormous brain. It uses up 20% of all our energy seven times more than the brains of most mammals. But it is this big brain that allows us to survive in the most extreme conditions. Braun is able to turn a few twigs and sinew into an impromptu trap. And in spite of the weather, Aki can use two pieces of wood to make a fire. With night on the way, a fire is essential, not just for keeping them warm. It's also their best protection against predators. Despite the cold, Europe at the time was home to packs of hyenas and even lions. This time, they drive off the danger. But as long as the three of them are alone, they remain vulnerable. Aki, Mara, and Bran are coping well in unfamiliar territory. Their intelligence allows them to find ways to continue their regular routines. Aki has made a flint sharp enough to use as a razor. A beard can be a liability in a cold climate. It retains moisture and can freeze up when temperatures drop too low. Mara! 
breakfast comes courtesy of bronze trapping skills. Hares were common throughout Ice Age Europe. Because there's water, shelter, and plenty of food, it's tempting to break their journey and stay here for a few days. But if they're ever going to make contact with other people, they need to keep moving. In Europe, 24,000 years ago, there were a hundred square miles of land for every human being. Now that signs of spring have arrived, the travelers have the best chance of finding others. They've covered 600 miles since they left England and have reached the northern plains of Germany. It's May and temperatures are finally creeping up above freezing. As the snow melts, the rivers become swollen. Mara, Aki, and Bran aren't used to water running this fast. But they're using their intelligence creatively and turning the river to their advantage. They've never made a raft before, but they've seen wood float, and as a hunter, Aki has made timber sleds strong enough to carry reindeer carcasses. They're taking a big risk. If the raft capsizes, they'll drown. Any river or lake they've known has always been too cold for them to learn to swim. But the risk is worth taking. The river will carry them downstream much faster than they could ever walk. This is the real value of human intelligence. Our ability to cope with unfamiliar situations and invent new solutions. Dealing with change has become a way of life for our species because we evolved in such a volatile climate. Scientists are only beginning to understand just how rapidly climate has changed over the past two and a half million years. Within the warm and cold phases of the Ice Age, there have been many shorter and wilder fluctuations capable of transforming landscapes. This basin has gone from savanna to deep lake and then back to savanna on at least 30 occasions sometimes over centuries, sometimes only decades. And animal life of all sorts has had to adapt to such rapid change. We're familiar with the idea that evolution can create specialists, animals that are adapted to eating a certain kind of uh, food or adapted to a certain kind of climate. And that's fine, but it only works up to the point when the environment changes. No environment is permanent. A landscape can exist for maybe tens, uh, hundreds, maybe even thousands of years, but then things change, and sometimes abruptly. In a history of environments that is so volatile and unstable, what that does is it favors the generalists, the evolution of generalists, animals that are much more versatile. It's the versatility that allows us to spread to new environments, to modify our surroundings in order to cope better when the environment changes. And in this way, human beings are unique. 